Welcome back. This is part two of the Visual Chameleons ML Agents tutorial. In this video, we're going to get set up and configure the training, train the agents, and then see what the results of the training looks like. We need to update trainer underscore config dot yaml. And this file belongs underneath the ML agents directory inside config. And this is where you'll find all of these other training uh, configurations, for example, the push block and all that. And I kind of just copied one of these and tweaked it till it, it worked the way I wanted it to. Chameleon learning uh, is what it needs to be called to match the brain name. And then I've added these. I'm not saying these are correct. These worked for me. Using curiosity seems to be a key to good performance. I have two layers with 128 hidden units each. And then all the rest of this, I, I don't even know what some of these mean. Although the summary frequency is just how often it outputs a summary of the performance to the logs. Then the next thing is this chameleonlearning.json, which is inside of the curricula chameleon directory. And this will determine the curriculum that we follow. So what this means is it's going to measure the reward. And when the reward is above this threshold, it's going to make it a little more difficult. So it's going to train. And then when it gets to a reward of 0.7 or higher, as long as it's trained 50 lessons long, then it's going to change the color accuracy from 0.5 to 0.6. So I'll, I'll show you the color accuracy in a moment, but basically each time we hit 0.7, it's going to say, okay, let's up the difficulty. It needs to be a little more accurate with the color. And so we're gonna keep climbing up to 0.9, so 90% accuracy on the color that is that it matches. So if the chameleon is within 10% in this case, then we're saying, yes, you get you get rewards for that. And each time it still says 0.7 because it's going to knock down and it, it will fail at uh, this new threshold for a while. I wanted to talk about the code really quick. So the most of the code is pretty straightforward and it's also, I made sure to document it very well. So there's lots of comments to explain what's going on. So I won't go into a lot of detail in this video, but the thing that I there's two things I wanted to point out. One is that inside the agent, we're not collecting observations because we're using video. It does that automatically behind the scenes. We don't have to do anything. If you've looked at other agents in the past or you've created your own that use vector observations, you'll notice that they all override this collect observations method. And inside, this is the push agent, the push block agent. It has this check, this use vector obs. And what this is doing is it's allowing you, because push agent was built to work with both vision and without vision, meaning um, you input the ray casts instead. If you uncheck this box, then it won't ever run this code. It'll just use the vision because by default it's using that vision. So we don't even need to implement this because we don't have any ve vector observations at all. So you'll notice that in the agent, it doesn't have that function. And then the other thing, I just wanted to show the, the action, the agent action function. And so what I talked about before is that we have this, these actions are negative one, zero, or one on each step for each color. And so we're calculating how much we're going to change the color by multiplying by our color change magnitude. And we also then set that agent color based on that action. So we're just adding a certain number of, um, values something i don't know what the unit is for color but we're adding it to the color and or subtracting it from the color and then we're also just doing a quick check so this is the reward function um, if we're not holding the color we take away some points and that's divided by the max step so it'll be one one thousandth in this case and then in the case where it is holding the color 
we do some calculation below. You can take a look at it. I've commented it, commented it pretty well. But basically, there's a, there's a reward multiplier that's based on whether the color has changed since the last step. And so the way I did that was checking whether the red, the green, or the blue has, has changed. If it's anything other than zero, then we know that the, that the agent tried to change the color since the last frame. And I added this, this sort of boost of an extra 30% because I wasn't getting very great results at the end. The, the chameleons were still flickering a lot. Once they sort of landed on a general color, they would flicker. So I wanted to encourage them to sit still on that. When you're ready to begin training, you'll, from your command prompt, your terminal, uh, in particular, the anaconda prompt is what I'm using. You will run this ML agents stash learn command with the config and the curriculum all set up. Uh, make sure to check the resources under the video for more detail on how to do this. But I'm going to start training. I'll hit enter. And as soon as it tells me that it's ready, start training by pressing the play button in the Unity editor. Okay, it's ready. So I'll switch over here and I'll hit play. Now notice I have eight of these guys ready to go. Hit play. And this is what we see as the agent, or rather, this is what each agent sees. It sees this pixelated 84 by 84 pixel view, and it sees the, uh, the background here. That it's, that's ultimately what it's trying to match, but it doesn't quite know that yet. Uh, and then it has this, it, ha it can see itself, essentially. And so the goal is going to be to find a color that makes the reward system happy. And in that case, that will be when this color is the same as this color. And I want to point out that this even works with shadows in it. It'll find sort of a, a way to determine what the correct color should be, even though maybe we as humans wouldn't be able to do this so precisely. So I'm going to let this train for a while, and then we'll come back and take a look at it. Now I want to show you the results of my training. So I ran this several times. The best results I got were a training run that took about four and a half hours. To get to your trained models, you go to ML agents, um, that directory, and then in here there's models. And if you've completed training, then you should have several in here. This chameleon 04 was my best run. And you'll find a chameleon learning.bytes file in here. And we need to import that into our project. So I'm in the brains folder right next to my chameleon learning brain. And I click and I drag this down in here. And now I have this bytes file in here. We want to connect that to the model here in the learning brain. So we drag that in there. Now it's going to use this when Academy is set up correctly. So our academy is set up with control checked right now. We want to uncheck this to say, use the model of this learning brain instead. Don't use external command line that's running. And then we also want to change the color frequency now. So if we increase this to say four, it's going to change the color of this background platform every four seconds. And I'm gonna play this really quick. And you'll see that with this 0.1 set, it kind of flickers a lot when it's changing colors. 
Um, and that's because we set it up when it was training so that it could change colors very quickly. We want to slow this down. And so I'm going to try changing it to just two over 255. So that's a lot slower, but you'll see that it has this nice smooth gradient transition as it's choosing the color that it wants to use to match the background. Some of these aren't perfect, but in general, it's pretty impressive and it does a lot better with brighter colors. I'll go to my scene view so you can kind of see all of these at once. All of these different chameleons are using their brains that we've trained to match their background color. And I just think it looks really cool. I'm really excited with the results of this. So that's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, if you had fun making these, please let me know. You can leave a comment below or you can reach out to me on social media. I'm pretty friendly, so I try to respond to everybody that says something to me, whether it's constructive feedback or just a friendly thank you. And on that note, thank you for watching.